All right, we are live and on the air and waiting for someone out there to join us. And I've run the BeLive.TV ad um, so that it will be right at the beginning of the video for those who watch the video over again. And um, uh, so good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Bill from World Bible School, and welcome to Heal Because God Said So the healing show where we talk about how to change your mind and <laughs> how to change the way you think. It's like the Marine Corps. I've never been in the military, but Marine Corps says that we're going to change your mind, going to change the way you think. So that's what we're after. Good to have everybody this evening. Good to see David Ketterman joining this evening. Uh, he is our uh, a friend of the ministry. I almost called him one of our board members, a friend of the ministry. There's Michael Porter. Uh, Apostle Michael Porter is one of our instructors for uh, WBSU and he's uh, on the show today. Uh, uh, Tenderheart is joining us. Um, David Jacobs, who actually is our board member, joining us this evening. There's Deborah Adcock joining us this evening from Tulsa. All right. Um, just right across the way, right here in Joplin, Missouri. Good to see Carol um, Missing join us this morning. I hope I'm saying her name right. And um, I think there's others who are actually watching because a whole lot of people are watching right now. There's one of our students, Linda Routley, another uh, student, uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Melton. Um, we've got an instructor by the name of Jermaine Thomas joining us this evening uh, in the chat room as well as on, uh, on the show. Uh, so it's just good to see everybody. And uh, there's David Jacobs popped in. There's uh, uh, John Barrett uh, joining us, uh, uh, a man that's ordained with our ministry. Apostle John Barrett's been on a few of my uh, Kingdom Dynamics programs before. So it's just good to see everybody this evening. And good to have my panel back with me for a week, too. Good to have Apostle Daniel Williams, Apostle Jermaine Thomas, Apostle Michael Porter. And we've been having fun with uh, this subject as we got started last week with the fullness of God uh, because uh, you know guys as we get started tonight one of the things that people really don't think they know about God uh, but don't know about God is to understand his fullness because you can't just talk about how full uh, and wonderful God is uh, if it doesn't associate with something and um, I'm, I'm preparing a, a class as I'm teaching a basic associate class this next week on uh, really it's, it's, it's a basic theology class. And one of the things I'm getting into is a statement that was made on one of my shows here a while back by Dr. Glenn Hartline, who also is one of our instructors. He said that intimacy requires equality. And, you know, if anything less than, than equality would be dominance by the, the other party. And our God's not that way. And he's made us equal with himself. And he might be the creator and we might be the creator. But I'll tell you what, that in the Hebrew language, that's a very, very fine line, if uh, much of a line at all. And uh, so <clears throat> I think it's very important to understand the fullness of God in that light. Uh, so uh, let me kick this off tonight and we'll... Uh, We'll uh, read a couple of scriptures and then let our panel talk tonight. Uh, I, I, I kind of uh, posed some questions in today's advertisement. Uh, actually, yesterday's advertisement said, how would the fullness of God within us express itself? So when you think about the fullness of God being in us, how would that, what would that look like? How would God uh, express himself in that way? And, and I think we all uh, kind of know that uh, tonight. But uh, another question I, I asked, because we, we sort of uh, got on this last week uh, at, the, at the end of the show. And we've had actually, whether you guys are aware of it or not, we've actually had requests for us to talk about this. So I asked this question, what would life being... Uh, uh, the expression of life. What about life being the expression of life and immortality? Um, you know, it seems like people believe that we're going to die, but people are getting to where they believe that they want to die. So now there's a, a gospel. It's not another gospel. It's not some other gospel that um, 
uh, people are, are, are preaching necessarily, but it's the gospel we're coming into, the truth of the gospel, which is about life and immortality. Uh, and then I also pose the question, would the concept of, of uh, live and not die uh, be an expression of what Christ came to show us? And, and so we're going to get into this tonight and talk about a very familiar portion of scripture uh, from uh, John 11, verse 25 and 26. And I'm reading this tonight from the Passion Translation. Uh, it says, Martha, Jesus said, yeah, as Jesus is talking to Martha, said, don't you, uh, you don't have to wait until then. Of course, we're talking about something, talking about resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection and I am life eternal. And I love the way the Passion Translation says that. And then he goes on to say, anyone who clings to me in faith, even though he dies, will live forever. And the one who lives is by believing in me will never die. And it's so wonderful, these last five words that Jesus poses as a question. He says, do you believe this? So uh, one of the things we're going to uh, get into tonight is our, uh, of course, as you've noticed, uh, uh, gentlemen, most of the shows that I do, no matter which way I go, as a matter of fact, most of my college courses always end up talking about identity. Uh, because if you don't have a point, a frame of reference, that's another way to express identity. If you don't have a frame of reference, then you don't have nothing to 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 target or to to make your uh, goal. Because you know, as we know from Scripture, that the fullness of the stature of Christ really is the. The, the, the line we're attaining to, that's the thing that God has done in us. And we're, we're, we're trying to transition our thinking and our, our mannerisms to be exactly that because he made us that. So uh, uh, just a, uh, one thing here, I'll just uh, do this and then we'll uh, get our panel into this discussion. Uh, when he said, I am, every time Jesus speaks the words and says, I am, uh, it, it, the words that I am in the Aramaic are a clear statement of Christ's deity as, as in I am the living God, the resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am the life. And I think one of the problems with Christendom, and I've used this phrase many times in the past, Christendom is as, a, as what we call Christianity in the, as a whole. I call it kind of like the, the circumference of believer, Christendom. Christ-like, uh, is that people only see a man who simply lived 33 and a half years and then he died. But but there was a purpose in his death that doesn't have to become the purpose of our death or the, for the reason for us to, you know, people think that we have to do what Jesus did. So we got to be crucified. We got to suffer in life and then we got to die. And none of that's true. Uh, you know, I, I hate the day. You know, there actually is a holiday where they celebrate persecuted saints all over the world and it's like persecution and death the end result of that is death that, that it becomes now a time to celebrate that's nothing to celebrate there's something greater to celebrate so um, uh, apostle michael porter kick us off this time uh and talk to us about this because we're seeing a very surreal uh picture here as Martha's, you know, really kind of got arrogant with Jesus in earlier scriptures about Lazarus' death. You know, hey, if you'd have been here, you know, he wouldn't have died. But Jesus is trying to convey a whole new truth to her, and it's a truth I heard, certainly hope we're able to convey tonight. So start us off tonight, if you would, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's good to be here with you and my brothers, too. Um, I, I just kind of went, I took the scripture you, you posted there, but I went back to kind of give it some context just for me personally and kind of started with the beginning of the story and wanted to bring out some definitions because the way I look at scripture is this, if I, if I tell the story or teach the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead and the conversation with Martha, it's a beautiful story and it has application to me, but if I look at it allegorically and it ha say that it's happening yeah. inside of me, well, then it uh -huh. gets on, you know, a whole different level. So that's kind of my thinking on it. So when I thought about Lazarus here, the picture of Lazarus dying, uh, Lazarus lost his awareness of his body, his sensory man. He lost his awareness of his sensory man. And Jesus comes to raise him back up to newness of life. And so to me, it's like an allegorical picture of raising up our awareness to that of life that 
this resurrection of Lazarus is a picture of the actual resurrection occurring within me and within you and with people listening yeah. now or later that we're yeah. being consistently raised to newness of life in this ongoing uh, resurrection in our awareness. And uh, if you notice, I mean, there's all kind of pictures here in this allegory that, you know, the grave clothes could represent Lazarus' awareness of mortality in thinking that he was merely human and in thinking that he would die. Jesus comes along to say, no, if you believe in me, you don't have to go through this process in order to experience resurrection. You can, I am the resurrection and the life. We'll get to right. it a little bit. So he says, take the grave clothes off of him. So I'm just thinking about myself and I'm thinking, what's happening to us right now is our awareness of death, our awareness of mortality, our awareness of being just merely a human is being unraveled from around our heads or our consciousness. And as it gets unraveled, we begin, like you said a while ago, we begin to experience life. We begin to experience this resurrection power and the river of life begins to flow in us. And, you know, they were calling him dead, but Jesus said, no, he's just sleeping. I'm going to mm -hmm. go and wake him up. And isn't that what's happening with your videos and other videos, these gentlemen who are on here with us and many other people, they're waking people up to the fact that the order of the day is life and not death. And I don't need death to graduate to resurrection. Resurrection right. is happening in the now moment in my yep. life and your life as I wake up in the awareness of Christ in me, who is the hope of glory. So I see, you know, this picture of the tomb. You got a, a stone in front of this this tomb here, and it, it's just a picture of holding life in a concept of just being mere matter, just being merely human. And Jesus comes along, and what he's doing in our consciousness, Dr. Bill, is he's rolling the stone away yeah, out of our mindset it. that we're just merely human beings, and we're beginning <laughs> to believe or become aware that we are eternal beings, spiritual <clears throat> beings, Yes, we are here in a material plane, but this has no application to us. We are eternal beings. And in a sense, he consistently rolling away the stone through the power of the Holy Spirit, yeah. working in our lives to bring us to an awareness of oneness, of completeness, mm -hmm. of wholeness, of salvation. So that's just where I started. I started thinking about Lazarus and how is Lazarus inside of me and how am I? I'm the tomb. I'm the stone. I'm the Christ in this picture. I was making yeah. me everybody in the picture. And when I do look at it allegorically like that, it becomes a beautiful thing happening within me and within you that the Spirit of God is raising our awareness to newness of life. And as it does, that awareness affects our entire being. Yeah. And this is a story about healing. And let me tell you, this resurrection life is the healer of your body and my yeah. body too. And that is what is happening, I believe, in, in us and to us and through us as we manifest this Christ life in the earth. Yeah, right, right. You know, Apostle Daniel, I've, I've seen, uh, as you've watched several of my uh, shows in the past, I've watched as every time the subject of life and immortality came up, uh, you jump on that. You know, a lot of people today believe that we're here for a few years and then we're going to die and uh, really can't embrace uh, life and immortality. Uh, what, what is it that really intrigues you about living forever as opposed to just get a little older, die, be done with it? And, you know, what is it about life and immortality that people are missing? Oh, that's good. That is good. I, it gets the bottom line is our understanding, our perception of what really is true and what is not. And uh, I mean, the Bible's very clear about it. If you're carnally minded and you're thinking about the lower state oh, yeah. and humanity, you're, you're, you can't really focus on or receive the things that are of the Spirit. And uh, that's where the mind of Christ is and becoming spiritually minded. You start seeing through His eyes instead of your own. And the Scripture says that that he will guide us with his eye. So I, I think as he's opening up our, our understanding, we're seeing that the finished work of the cross wasn't just so that we could go to heaven. 
<laughs> but the finished work of the cross means that everything that brought mankind to the place where death began to happen ha has been reversed. Jesus mm -hmm. come into this earth in an earth suit to reverse everything that gone wrong. And um, I thank God for what you were talking about, but it takes me to Galatians 2.20. I am already crucified with him. That's already happened. Nevertheless, I live. Hallelujah. You see, it's Christ that lives in me in the life which I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I, I, I'm not living in this world by just mere... Um, uh, humanity and that way of thinking, I'm living by super, uh, the supernatural, the fact that he lives in me and he's not going to die. You know, it reminded me of the scripture of when Jesus said that no man could take his life from him unless he laid it down himself. And this was a command that he had received. I see myself as one with him and we're coming to the place and to the grips of that reality that no one would be able to take our life unless we chose to lay it down and what we've been taught to do is at a certain age you know you just need to get ready to die we've been trained to die and the reason why it's, it's taken a while to to regain what, what he's given to us is because we got to be retrained to live. Hallelujah. So that, that's, yeah. that's my take at this point. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, so, yeah, continue on, Apostle Jermaine, please. Yeah. No, I just, I was, I talked about the conditioning uh, a few days ago. I had did a live um, in the evening and I talked about, you know, all the, the factors, you know, that went into us being conditioned, you know, in our lives, whether that came through uh, social conditioning, you know, the education, especially here in the Western education, you know, we're conditioned to believe in the sense realm and to rely on the trust in the sense realm. Everything is the scientific method. You know, anything outside of taste, touch, sight and seeing is not reality, is not real. Uh, we've been conditioned through, like you said, Christendom, you know, in our thinking, it's, a, it's appointed unto man to live and to die. And then you get so many years, you know, so many scores of years to live, you know, and, and all of that comes into, you know, uh, what we would call our human conditioning or our human makeup and our thinking. And as uh, Apostle Porter uh, uh, is so wonderfully pointed out about uh, Lazarus res being resurrected, is that the encounter that uh, that that uh, they had with the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And so the encounter that took place, and just, I, I just, I was just, you know, seeing myself in that situation. Imagine the conditioning, you know, of, of, of temple practicing Jews. Um, and then you have one set of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that believed in the resurrection and some that didn't. And so yeah. the cultural yeah. conditioning, the belief, and then for, the, then for Martha, then you can understand Martha's kind of snide remark at Jesus. Like, you know, if you were here, you know, our brother would be alive. And, and Jesus kind of in his own way in response and said, hey, look, check this out. I am the resurrection. You know, <laughs> I am the life. And check this out. Your brother's not dead as you've been conditioned in your mind to think. Uh, but he he's just sleeping. And so uh, this unraveling uh, or the pulling away of the stone of our thinking or what we've been conditioned with. And so, you know, that can, when, when, when uh, he talked about the stone and point out that stone about being, it being rolled away and then the unwrapping taking place, uh, I, you know, I just kept seeing that, that part that we've been conditioned to believe, you know, about life and about death, you know, and just accepting it as this is my uh, inevitable reality for me. But, but the, we're encountering the resurrection, the revelation, you know, of Christ in us, the hope of glory. And that as he is, so are we in this life. And so now the reality of living or immortality, it, 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 become, it comes into our purview now. And so now it's like these encounters. It's like now, now you can expect the encounters of life. You can expect the encounters of, 
of, of seeing what we would call the resurrection, where it doesn't have to be fake like the, the guy from Africa, fake, you know, the resurrection of the guy. You know, we don't have to do these gimmicks and things like that. We're going to begin to see, you know, uh, the these things beginning to manifest and to take hold because it's not just the, the revelation inwardly taking place, but it's going to begin to manifest outwardly as well and seeing death uh uh, because we don't recognize the reality of death and more immortality. And so we're going to see uh, re people being resurrected from the dead. It's going to become a part of normality, a normative uh, for us, because this is normal Christianity. Yeah. And, and I like what everybody's saying that, that we have been conditioned our entire lives um, uh, about death. Um, you know, and even in even in Christendom, we've we've had where we we were uh, taught about living three score and ten, and that was the limit, and which had nothing to do with death. Uh, then we were taught about uh, living 120 years, and and that had nothing to do with uh, that. It had to do with something else, and and they're both old covenant principles to begin with. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, when you read about uh, what Paul said, and Pastor Daniel, uh, Apostle Daniel, you said that about Paul, Galatians uh, 2.20. He said, I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. It, it, it was about identity. It was about if, if Christ, if what, uh, and again, it is finished being ego is finished. Yeah. Me and myself is finished. Everything, uh, every, because Christ didn't come so that I could, uh, have salvation, as it were. Christ came to to. Uh, I I look at the finished work as a jogging of our me memory, a a shocking experience of of shaking us to the point of remembering all that we've always been since the beginning, uh, yeah. before the foundation of the universe. Um, and so, uh, if if uh, if if death occurred at the cross. Anytime death occurs, it's so that something might live. Yeah. And if death occurred, then in this natural realm, then immortality in this natural realm is why God sent us there. It's amazing that when we look at people like uh, Methuselah, um, uh, 900 and whatever years, and mm -hmm. and then then we have Adam who just came in a little shorter than that, and people that the, the it seemed like that the as the identity factor moved further away from our God identity and more to a separation identity, the less people lived in this earth. But it stands to reason then if the, the reverse would be true, that the more we move away from in separation identity and the more we move into our God identity, that our physical beings just naturally want to live or just naturally live longer. Uh, one of the things about Jesus living 33 and a half years and then dying is that he came as the representative of the Father. Uh, and John 1.1 1, 1 de declares that Jesus is the living expression from the Passion Translation. He's the living expression of the Father. He is the same living expression known as the Word, uh, who was fully God in the beginning. In, in other words, when you look at Jesus, I don't care whether you're looking at him as manifested in this flesh or manifested in, in uh, you know, in his uh, supernatural identity. However you see him, the fact is he is eternal. Yeah. Why should I think of myself as any less than eternal? Yeah. Uh, he is the eternal God. I am, am, am eternal like my father. So, so this question, uh, uh, did this, uh, did, is this, that did this living expression, who is the eternal Christ, come to show us the path to death or the path to life? Now yeah. that's a real a real uh, uh, mind teaser for people because if you really think about it, uh, there's no one that would say, really say in the right mind that Jesus came to show us how to die. He yeah. came to show us death. <laughs> no, he came to show us life. The scriptures are extremely clear on that. Now, uh, uh, as far as how you can imagine that uh, living in this this uh, the, in your spiritual. Uh, imagination. Uh, can you imagine yourself living a hundred years, 120 years? I mean, we have historical records in the last 100, 200 years. Somebody's living 145 years. 
uh, a, a lady, little lady in Czechoslovakia lived 145 years. We got people that's busting the charts, so to speak, all the time. The, you know, what we're doing is we're saying, well, they lived 145 years. I'm going to make that my goal. Why make that your goal? Why not have goals that are goalless, that are limitless, Come that on. are that's so good. outside the box that says, you know yeah. what? I'm just going to be like Christ. Yeah. I'm going to live forever. Now, here's the problem with Christ, and then we'll get Pastor Mike, Apostle Michael back in here. Uh, but uh, if we look at Christ, people say, yes, but 33 and a half years, and he died. Yep, but what we got to understand is he said I was going to come back to life, and he did come back to life, uh, fully man and God. And you know what he did? He just fully manifested inside of, of these, these human bodies. But he always was. Yeah. He always was. Again, we're talking about an eternal God. So uh, this Thursday night, uh, Dr. K. Fairchild is going to be on Kingdom Dynamics. And we're going to talk about, we're, we're going to step up this identity factor. We're going to talk about an eternal identity. I mean, think about <laughs> nice, it. Everything nice. really is eternal. So um, what do we tell people, Apostle Michael, uh, who just think that, you know, hey, all there is is death. I mean, continue on with your story about uh, about Lazarus and and about Jesus talking about this. This is so powerful. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, the only thing we can do is uh, continue to speak life to people and let them absorb the words that we're saying and believe those words have power, vibrational power, energy power. I, I, I really believe that's what happened with Lazarus. Jesus stands there and just says, you know, Lazarus, come forth. I believe the vibrational power of his words interjected into the body of Lazarus and he raised his energy back up to a life awareness and Lazarus gets back up in a living state. And so yeah. the more we hear words of life, the more our vibrations of our body is lifted, elevated, the more the energy of life is created yeah. within us. So I think the raising of Lazarus happens every day within us. And every time Somebody puts life in my awareness. Lazarus just got raised again. Yeah. Resurrection just happened again. It happens all the time. But I'll tell you the thing that jumped out with me here uh, really quickly in this story was uh, in, in the telling of before we get to the I am the resurrection and the life. He, he looks at them and he says there are 12 hours in a day. And when I read that, I'm like, wait a minute. There's not 12 hours in a day. What? What is this? What is this talking about? And so I just really started kind of meditating on that. And I'll take a minute to share with you what I believe uh, was expressed to me. So he said there's 12 hours in a day and you can divide the day into two parts, day and night, 12 and 12, 12 hours a day, 12 hours right. of darkness. Well, listen, on this side of the cross, we live in perpetual day. That's it. But nobody's told us that. They still told us we were in ignorance, still teach us ignorant things. And we believe we're in yep. the darkness. We believe we're in yep. a death culture. The reason we're dying is we believe we're supposed to. And if people would start telling us we're not supposed to and start speaking life, it would raise not only the vibration and energy of individuals, but of whole places. Dr. Bill, there's evidence that people have things called peace gatherings where they gather in cities and just meditate on peace and concentrate mm -hmm. on peace. And there's evidence to show that communities are changed just by people getting together and they don't wow. preach their individual dogma. They just meditate, focus on, love each other and focus on peace. And it raises the energy, raises the level of everything around them. So I started talk, thinking about days and 12 hours in a day, and I, I believe it can represent degrees of understanding. We're called to be children of the light, walk in the day and not the darkness. So as my awareness comes into this, I'm in a perpetual day. I'm not in the ignorance of death. I am in the newness of life. Jesus comes to show me this. And so Lazarus had fallen asleep, and Jesus speaks words to wake him up. And I, I really believe, as these other gentlemen and you, Dr. Bill, and other people that we know, too many names to mention, but as we hear life words, the Christ in us speaks again to any concept of death within us, and it raises us up out of death consciousness or Adam's mm -hmm. thinking, and it raises us up to Christ-level thinking. And so I was thinking about this number 12 and jumped on the number 12. And good Lord, there's so many applications to the number 12. But what right. jumped out at me is there are um, there are 12 nerve centers in your brain. 
And these 12 nerve centers run down, 10 of them run down through the base of your brain, and they run down in your body, and they send signals to your entire body. And I started thinking about the scripture that says, you know, if your eye is single, full of light, your whole body will be yes. full of light. Yeah. So I believe what is happening in this resurrection, in this raising of, of Lazarus, is that our body is becoming aware of the light that we already are. And as it is, our, uh, after that, our brains are communicating to our physical uh, being here, and we're coming to understand we're not material. We are light beings, beings of love, eternal beings. And as that works, it sends signals down to the yeah. organs of our body, awaking them to life, sending life messages to them. As a matter of fact, yeah. I tried to do this. I don't know how good this will work, but I printed off a diagram, and I'm going to hold it up. There are 12 nerve centers of the body, and this is a diagram of where they go and which organs they work in, and they flow down from your the base of your brain down through to your spinal cord, and they send, they send signals all out through your body. So I want you to see that. As life is being spoken into your consciousness, the life consciousness that you have begins to send signals down through your 12 nerve centers of your body, and life goes down into your liver and your kidney and your lungs and right, your, your right. spleen and your legs and your feet, <laughs> and pretty soon you standing up in a new life, a resurrected life. That, man, that's what's uh, happening to all of us. And uh, I got one more here for you. Here's the, uh, the kind, of, <laughs> kind of slide of your brain and, and uh, where those nerves go and how they come out of your brain. Right. And, uh, so I just wanted you to see that you got 12, there are 12 nerve centers within you. We don't have time to go in all those 12, but those 12 are being awakened with life. Lazarus is being raised from the dead. Yeah. When, a, when somebody rolls away the stone of ignorance and darkness and people wake up yeah, to that's the voice good. of a new day, I'm listening to the voice of a new day. <laughs> Men and women are speaking to me from a day perspective yeah. and not a night perspective. Yes, sir. And we're, uh, we've grown so tired of ignorance, we won't listen to mm, people who are speaking out of darkness. Yeah. We, we tune out that. And we tune in to light and we tune in to love and we tune in to the vibration of yeah. life. And as it is, I just believe that we are created naturally for this life to flow down out of our consciousness and work into every cell, every fiber of our being. And Dr. Bill, as it does, gentlemen, as it does, I believe, man, we come out of that tomb of what we thought we had to do. We had to go through death to get a resurrection experience. And now we're hearing new voices saying, no, you don't have to go through a death to get a resurrection. Resurrection is about life, not death. One man died. The scripture says death came by one man. And right. so life came by another yeah. one man. And so mm -hmm. I'm in the man of life today, not the man of death. The yeah. man of death has been taken away. Yeah. And the only man that's left is the man of life. But we keep lying to people and telling them the man of death is still here and they're in that man. And nothing could be further from the truth. So look, when my eye becomes full of light, that's my right. whole body becomes full of light. What my consciousness starts speaking to, what I used to believe was a material self, a physical self. And um, so Jesus is really saying, blessed are those who walk in the day and don't walk in ignorance and fear yeah. and believe in the presence of the power of the resurrection in them. Yeah. And they yeah. build themselves up in God awareness. <laughs> and when you start building yourself up in God awareness, before you'll know it, you'll experience heaven on earth. Yeah. You won't have to wait to get to a heaven. So this, this resurrection to me is raising up into spiritual con consciousness and it's accomplished by the quickening power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, one, one scripture that really jumped out to me was in Corinthians chapter 15, and it, it's verse uh, 21, and I believe the other one's 51. It says this, Dr. Bill, we shall not all sleep. Yeah. Right. Yep. We ain't going to all sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we shall yep. be changed, it says. That's right. And yeah. that's what's happening to us. We are being transformed by the renewing yeah. of our mind, and the transformation is affecting what we yeah. thought was a physical, material-only body, what we thought was just temporary and on this plane only. We're beginning to understand that's not us at all, and we're being changed in our conscious awareness. And this power of resurrection is Christ in us. Yeah. He said, he said I am the resurrection.
resurrection and the life. Yeah. The resurrection is not in the future. The resurrection is in my present. It's yeah. happened to me. I believe I'm being resurrected right now while I'm talking to yeah. you, good, good <laughs> me. And I believe you're being resurrected while you're hearing me, and I'm being resurrected while I'm hearing uh, you. And yeah. man, life is flowing. It's not in the future. It's in the now. Yeah, it's in the, man, now. the last scripture I got. Yeah. For my little section here is 2 Timothy 1.10. It says, Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death. That's and right. brought life and immortality to life. Now walk in the day and not in the night. You are a person of the day, a person of the light. This life of Christ is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And if Christ, if Jesus is the resurrection, then you already have the resurrection power. You don't need a revival yeah. to work it up. You don't yeah. need a scheduled meeting to work it up. You don't need a great potentate chief apostle to lay hands on you. Right. You already <laughs> have this resurrection life living in you. And so it's the lifting up of man in his consciousness is the resurrection. It's not getting Amen. me out of a physical death. It's bringing me into a consciousness of life, which prevents me from physical death, yeah. experiencing death. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey. Amen. I don't make myself Amen. happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us, Apostle Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you guys just keep taking the words out of my mouth. I can't improve on that. Say them but again. I, I, hallelujah! I'm thinking about when when Lazarus was resurrected. He said to take the grave clothes off him, go on wrapping. I think the thing that is, even though he was resurrected, uh, 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 he had to have those clothes ripped off, and that signifies what the Lord is doing now. He's taking the grave clothes off. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever believeth on me shall never die. So yeah. now take the grave clothes off your old way of thinking and see yourself as one that is, is eternal. You know, he said that he is given unto us eternal life well right. i believe that yes. eternal life that he's given on to us because that the cross and the work of the cross the finish that was all inclusive he he'd done everything necessary for us to step yeah. into the eternal work the eternal finished work of of the cross but the grave cloths the grave clothes the the death way of thinking has got to be reversed, and we have to come in yeah. line yes. with what he said and begin to speak life. He said the entrance of his word, and this is word that is alive in us, the entrance of his word brings life. Yeah. Hallelujah. And yes. that life is the life that God has. So I, I really believe fully that the message that is being quickened and brought forth in the body of Christ now is timely. Everything he does at a certain time, his times and purposes and seasons for all things to take place, and everything's beautiful in his time. I believe this yeah. is a set time for the body of Christ to, to realign with what he said. And according to the word of God that you just spoke, we don't have to die. There's no reason yeah. if we can be changed. And I don't really necessarily believe that is an being caught up and removed, I believe that is being caught up in him yeah. and transformed and complete a metamorphosis takes place and, and we are changed into that very image that he's created us to be from the beginning. But that yeah. image, as we know, has been distorted yeah. and, and it is, it, we have been spoken to as though, you know, a, a flu season comes uh, knocking on the door, then you need to open it up and let it in. But uh, the scripture says, no plague will come nigh your dwelling. No sickness and disease. He's redeemed us from all of that. So the grave clothes are being removed. Lazarus is out of the tomb. The body of Christ has come out of the tomb. We were crucified with him in the death of the cross. We were also resurrected with him when he came back alive at the same very time. Hallelujah. And that is becoming a revelation to us that is going to totally revitalize the way the church has been believing and thinking. I don't believe in dying anymore. 
Yeah. But I know that I'm going to have to keep speaking what he said. I'm going to have to fill my, my get the mind of Christ as he is. I, I need to begin to, to develop the mind of Christ in a full mo- uh, measure so that I can yeah. see myself as a recipient of everything that he already completed and Excellent. said, here it is. It's yours. Choose life. That's me. And when you do that, he said, live. And <laughs> praise God. It, it, I, I'm so excited I can't hardly talk because you guys are hitting the nail on the head 100% of the time. And this, this is a real move of God. <laughs> yeah. This isn't what we would call some, some smokescreen type of thing. This is a real move of God is that our eyes of our understanding are being enlightened and we're beginning to see what the hope or the expectation of his calling is on our yes, lives. Yes. Hallelujah. And we are now being called out of the tomb, out of the grave to resurrect with the same spirit that raised him from the dead, revitalizing, and regenerating and healing our mortal bodies we are coming into that reality even now. And I, I'm, I'm feeling it too. I'm experiencing it at this yeah. moment while we talk. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you know, you know, Apostle Jermaine, I know you're chopping at the bits there, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I've seen that. You know <laughs> one of the things, uh, you know, uh, Lisa reminded uh, me in the chat room that he told others to take the grave clothes off. And we know that the taking the grave clothes off is, is, and we're talking about resurrection, our our old awareness is being resurrected to a new awareness. And uh, that's one of the things we're doing on this program is we're uh, trying to resurrect the awareness of people to a new awareness. So uh, anyway, yeah, because resurrection life. So talk to us some more, Apostle Germain. Tell us some more about this. Yeah, I and I just want to piggyback on that. I, I uh, to kind of slow it down a bit just to kind of, you know, take in what's been sharing, uh, what God is sharing. Um, the the community, like like he said, Jesus told them to take off the gro- grave clothes, and so this is why community is important. You know, mm-hmm. as you talked about, this is the season and the time of God restoring truths, you know, to the body of Christ uh, or to humanity as a whole, you know, of who we have always been. And um, mm-hmm. so this is why community, I believe, even in, in this 12th hour, um, if you will, is so important and so indicative to get around like minds and like hearts, you know, so that we can continue to take off the grave clothes. You know, um, he, God wants us to experience this, you know, a community and community we thrive in community. You know, it's a it's a uh, sociologist recognize that we thrive in community. And so sitting somewhere isolated off to ourselves, you know, we we're cut off from this revelation. We're cut off from this truth or opportunity to hear the uh, to hear the vibrational uh, uh, eternal tone of God's heart and mm-hmm. mind to resurrect us in life. And so I just wanted to say that, too, that. You know, uh, and, and so because of that, and, and I'm encountering a lot of people, you know, who are who aren't in traditional church, you know, who are interested in going back to a traditional church. But God, through venues and mediums like social media and platforms like this is creating a space, you know, where we can have the opportunity, you know, to take off the grave clothes off of one another, you know, and to see this movement or this reality being restored back to humanity. I'm going to say humanity, not the body of Christ, but this reality, you know, of, of, of life and life, life and life, life more abundantly and more life on top of that, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. uh, to be lived out, you know, in the midst of one another. I think it was Dr. Lynn House that says that a truth ignored always comes back with a vengeance, you know, and so these are one of those truths <laughs> you know, that have been ignored. You see the resurrection and the life and the conditioning. We talked about the conditioning that had took place in, uh, in the resurrection uh, in the stone being rolled away. Now what we're seeing is the reconditioning. 
you know, that is taking place in the, in, in, in humanity. The, yeah. how we've been reconditioned to, to understand and to know that death is not our reality, that mm -hmm. life is our reality and yeah. that, that mm -hmm. life is the expected yes. norm. It's the expectation to, to expect to see me to live eternity and to grasp, uh, uh, no longer be afraid of, of death, but to embrace <laughs> the reality that immortality is my is is in my uh in my to take it in my imagination that it be, that it can become my reality in life and so you see uh, the, uh Mary and Martha and all of those that were around there seeing the resurrected resurrection of Lazarus and then fast forward it to when Jesus resurrected you know who were the two that showed up <laughs> at his tomb Come on now. you know so you see the reconditioning that took place and it put within them an expectation to come and see, you know, the one who said he is the resurrection and the life, you know. And, and so it is important. And I, and I think that's really what I really want to focus in on, you know, the importance of, of, of community like this, you know, and we continue to stay on this subject. Because you see how the disciples and how they were conditioned culturally, many of them went on back to the normative part of life. And they walk mm -hmm. with Jesus, you know, for those three years. They see the supernatural. They seen mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. encounter, they, the mountain of transfiguration, you know, the, the fish being mu uh, multiplied and things like that. Uh, but yet at his death, you know, they uh, dispersed. But and so I think that that is important that we continue on this subject and, and continue to bound this line of what we're talking about and what we're sharing you know, take that to heart, wrap my heart in mind. You know, I'm gonna have to go back and uh and re-listen to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the rest of all of our shows, because again, with we're with with we're sharing, God is having us to share nuggets or eternal truths or truths that have always been a reality. You know, whether you choose to believe it or not, doesn't change the, the, the fact or the reality that it is a truth. You know, that maybe yeah. later on some will come into, but to embrace it and accept it as normative in my life, I think is important. Amen. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yes, and, and, you know, yes, as we're talking about um, uh, how that uh, Jesus came and, and uh, infused Lazarus's, uh, uh, I, I don't know why I want to say life force, but from from death to life. <laughs> Uh, you know, neither death nor life really was the re the reality. Uh, resurrection brought him to a new place that he had ever known. Um, the Aramaic talks about um, resurrection in relation to Noah, who <laughs> symbolically uh, resurrected from the flood uh, as the life giver to those who repopulated the earth at that time. But you know, you know. Here's the thing about uh, when we talk about uh, what's going on. You know, of course, what we're teaching is one thing. What, but but what's happening in the lives of others as this show is happening right now? Um, people's bodies are being infused. Uh, their thinking is being infused at, at another dimension because you know this is some of what we already know. Uh, do you know that the human body uh, that 99 percent of the body is made up of atoms. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, atoms is uh, consists of, of a few different things. But I just had to. I, I just wondered about this, so I just posed the question uh, on uh, Google myself just to find out uh, about atoms. All all matter is made up of atoms. In other words, uh, they're the sh atoms are the shells for mm -hmm. energy. Now, I know we've talked about this on other shows. But what are we doing when we're declaring the life of God or we're declaring the resurrection? We're declaring the resurrection doesn't speak of that you've come into life, but that you've come, you've passed through his life. You were resurrected through his life. And now uh, we're experiencing something. When you come into this, this mind awareness, it's something that you can't go back from. You can't revert to the older. And that's what I'm finding about true revelation. When I, you know, when we come into things that we think are revelation, but they really don't produce uh, uh, e eternal life, as it were, uh, they eventually die out and change course. But when you come into real revelation that uh, is Jesus said, you'll know truth and truth will 
make you free. When you come into that type of revelation, you, you don't walk away from it. No, you, you, don't. You, you don't stop. You don't go backwards. You right. keep evolving in that, yep. but you don't go backwards. And so if if the human body uh, is and we, we I remember another show we talked about the 50 trillion cells in the human body that are all filled with energy. And, and, and the truth is, is that, you know, I bring that up because um, this is what li life and immortality is all about, is we're changing the way we think. We're thinking from death to life. But that process yeah. is called resurrection. And, and it's what Jesus experienced. It's what brought the physical, uh, the literal body of Jesus to a, a supernatural state. Now, uh, before I give everybody a, a, a another crack at this tonight, I do want to say this. Uh, Daniel Williams, uh, Apostle Daniel, you said something about that you didn't believe that we were, you know, just going to vanish and, and get out of here. That wasn't the plan. Uh, but you know what Paul talked about in the in First Corinthians 15? He said, and this is where people mess up. They they read the Bible literally. Dr. K wrote an article recently talking about how people li read the Bible literally, and 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 that's really all you take away from it is just the the these beautiful little stories. But the, but the the fact is this that um, that life and immortality. Uh, Paul said, "In a in the moment, mm -hmm. in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. That that immortal uh, mortal will put on immortality, and and so on. And you know the story there. But here's the word. The the word moment there is the Greek word atomos, and it's exactly what I was talking about. It's the word we get our English word atoms from, and it really does allude to the fact that the atoms of our bodies." The more we come into truth, where our, our bodies are being realigned because our thinking is realigned. We want our bodies to change. That's why we go to miracle meetings. We're wanting a miracle. We're wanting everything just to instantly, physically, magically go through the fast food line, change and be fixed, and all of our problems are gone. But bodies adjust. What did Paul? Uh, what did the scripture say in Third John verse two? He said, "Beloved, I desire that you prosper." And be in health, even as or in equal proportion to your soul prospering. So if your thinking does, that's why this show switched some, I don't know how long ago, from just heal because God said so to changing the way you think. If your changing doesn't, thinking doesn't change, then we continue to experience the same things over yeah. and over again. So what are each of us doing uh, uh, on whatever level? Because Paul said each in his own time meaning that everybody doesn't get it all at the same time, but we're coming into this at different levels that people are, are, are experiencing this in, at different times. And I'm good with that just as long as we get it. And so uh, resurrection, uh, you know, believers are going to have to learn to live in and live through the Christ life. Paul said, I mm. identify with Christ. I was crucified. I died when he died. Yeah. But guess what? I'm still alive. <laughs> well, <laughs> why am I alive? Because I died. Uh, and, and of course, we know that Paul's, you know, uh, uh, way he related to that had nothing to do with the eternal Christ and from the beginning and we, who we always were. We're energy. We're spirit beings. Everything about us is energy. And God didn't want the, inner, the light of energy because you know what? We talked about Apostle. Michael, and I, I, I can't hit on what everybody has said, but about uh, uh, day and night. Day speaks of light and illumination, and and night speaks of darkness or the lack of illumination. Actually, the word darkness in the Hebrew means confusion. I don't want to live in a state of confusion. I've right. got to live in illumination. Right. Um, uh, we, we've got about 8, 10, 15 minutes. Apostle Michael, take another hit at this. <laughs> okay. Uh Man, I, I'm stuck on 12. <laughs> I'm stuck on 12 here. Uh, Take it off. Listen, it off. I, I, I want to say this. Don't, well, I'm not going to tell you don't. Think about this possibility of not thinking of your body as flesh, but as energy. Begin to think about yourself as energy. And I. this is what I, I'm beginning to do within myself now. I'm beginning to look. If I take a look at the spinal cord, our spinal cord, and the nerves that flow out from it, to me, that is the tree of life. That's the tree of life within me. 
and the river of life flows down into me and and if when i'm putting when i'm putting life information in it it speaks life to my being right. and awakens right. me to life and so every time i think about this i think about in the tabernacle of moses which is the place in the old covenant which is the picture where god lived at that time in their consciousness now we are the tabernacle of the lord and jesus yeah. stands jesus stands in that second room and there's a table in that room and the number 12 is there there are two stacks of six of bread two stacks mm -hmm. of bread six mm -hmm. in each stack and we don't have time to go into it but he said if you have this meal if you keep eating this meal with me i will allow you to sit on my father's throne with me in other words i'll allow you to rise up in your conscious awareness that you're already seated you're already one with the father so that number 12 talks about finished. It talks about completion. It talks about governmental right. rule. And as soon as I say governmental rule, I think about Isaiah and the government will be upon his shoulders. And if I yeah. think about that in literal terms of those, those 12 nerve centers of the body, think about it. The government of Christ in my consciousness upon my shoulders creates this awareness of life within me. And it just runs on and on. I mean, 12 is under the sign of Pisces, which is the fish. And um, the tree of life produces 12 types of fruit in the book of Revelation. The holy city, of which we are the holy city, is 12,000 yeah. furloings. And the wall is 144 cubits high. And I can tell you right now, well, if Dr. Fairchild was healed, she would tell me 1 plus 4 plus 4 equals 9, and that stands for consciousness. <laughs> and so... What I'm saying is, this is all centered around our thinking, like you just said. Yeah. As we arise in our thinking, life automatically comes into our being. And light yeah. begins to refract out of us. And our energy levels yes. rise. Our vibration rises. Life runs into every cell that you were talking about. Every atom. We become the energy that we always have been, we become aware of it, and we live it out. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. And 12 times 12 is 144. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff here. See, I run into all this all the time. People say, well, numbers don't really matter. Uh, you know, the, it, it did to the Hebrew people. It did yeah. to the Jewish people. And uh, they left us with a legacy in terms of, of a numerical value of things. Uh, and, and plus, everybody in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation spoke Hebrew. Uh, the Hebrew has uh, 22 letters to the uh, alphabet, 22 chapters in the book of Revelation. Uh, uh, every letter had a numerical value, had a symbolic value, and had a mu musical value. You can write music with the Hebrew language. Uh, pictures meant something to them. So all of this is important. Uh, Apostle Daniel, um, uh, speak to us again about this because... Uh, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I asked you first to be on this panel discussion, and uh, you you wanted to talk about life and immortality. I'll tell you why. It must really have something of value in your heart, uh, the revelation that God's opening up to you about living forever and not, not dying. Yeah, it does. It does because I, the, and it isn't because I'm getting older and, you know, looking for the fountain of youth or any of those kind of things. But it's, um, I, I just believe it, it is got a lot to do with the very season that, we, that we're in. And the Lord keeps bringing these things up. Uh, we are a supernatural people. We are led by the Spirit of God. We are one with Him. And uh, he, he keeps reminding me, though, uh, that your words what you agree with, with what comes out of your mouth becomes a reality that you live. And a man shall eat good by the fruit of his lips. And then I've heard some different analogies where they actually did a, a test on, on plants and different things. And they would speak to one plant and speak life and speak just good things, just generally, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, how wonderful you are. And when they spoke and released life, that plant would flourish. But when they uh, reversed it and began to speak death 
and you know how rotten you are. Oh, you're a disappointment. The plant literally responded to the words that were spoken. Right. And I, you know, and then I think about how things were created. You know, by faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So mm-hmm. things that are made were not made of things which do appear. I, I believe that he, he, the lining up with the, the mind of Christ, recognizing who we really are, speaking in line with that, is releasing the life that he wants to bring into the earth. So, of course, he's got to start with a few people that are say, well, I'm a candidate for that. I just believe that. Mm-hmm. And, and that's our part, just simply believe it. And uh, I find the more I, I fully believe what he said, I just automatically catch myself talking uh, about the things that I believe in. And I believe the right. Lord said, you can live and you don't have to die. One died for all, we're all dead. So that the appointed on the man yes. wants to die yeah. and after this the judgment doesn't apply because he's already taken care of the judgment. So if yeah. one died, we're all dead. Therefore, we can choose life and live. The, the price is paid. There is no debt. There is nothing assigned against us that Jesus didn't remove. He removed every assignment that would bring death in our lives. He's removed all of that. And what he's assigned us to is the life that he's released into us to just step across into the place where this whole physical being becomes transfigured like Jesus was. Remember on the mountain? And we had Elijah and Moses and Jesus, and they were transfigured right in front of them, and they wanted to build a, you know, oh, we're going to build a monument to each one of you. We're going to have a place, we're going to worship <laughs> all three of you. But yeah. what he was wanting to do was let us know that that he's trans. there's a transfiguring, there's a metamorphosis, there's a change that the Lord is releasing in the earth and he's taken just people like us and others that are willing to say, I believe it, Lord. So Amen. therefore, I believe, like you said, we've received the same spirit of faith. I believe, therefore, I speak. We believe also and speak. So we just speak in what he said because we believe it. And the reality of that is what we're going to step right into. I believe it with all my heart. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right, Apostle Germain. Yeah, I, I guess in my my part in the conversation is the the focus on the conditioning and reconditioning, you know, aspects of taking pl- what's taking place and the reconditioning. Um, I, I I just earlier I think it was earlier this year, um, or late last year, God, you know. Ask me a question. Well, what is reality? I'm like, well, you're asking me well, what is reality. I don't need to be asking you what is reality. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's how he dropped the nuggets in me. And I, I always know when he posed those questions to me, it is definitely presented to him, but it means to dig. Um, and so, you know, uh, in, in, in search of, you know, what is reality? You know, Jesus is my reality. You know, the, the resurrection, you know, him being the resurrection, I am, you know, is my reality. In him, I live, move, and have my existence. My existence is, is him. And so as he is, so am I. So he's my reality. Life is my reality, not death. Love Amen. is my reality, not fear. You know, and so righteousness, you know, uh, d- uh, divine innocence, you know, is my reality. You know, right. um, there's therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So, you know, this is a part of my nature and who I am and the reality of who I am. And so the, the reconditioning that you that the uh, Apostle Porter is talking about is definitely having an effect on our brain. And I just want to read this little part here. It talks about uh, and I think I mentioned this before about neuroplasticity. And it says yeah. this. It says our brains are truly extraordinary. Unlike computers, which are built to certain specifications, receive software updates periodically, our brains can actually receive hardware updates in addition to software updates. Different (laughs) pathways form and fall fall dormant are created 
or discard it according to our experiences. When we learn something new, we create new connections between our neurons. We rewire our brains to adapt to new circumstances. This happens on a daily basis, but it also is something that we can encourage and stimulate. And so, <laughs> I mean, man, you know, what we can recondition to in the reality, in, in what's our reality and what we can expect. And so I, I'm going to end with this. I think about that scene in uh, Doctor Strange movie, the Marvel movie, Doctor Strange. Right? <laughs> he encountered uh, 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 this, this people. He was at the end of himself in modern medicine. And he wanted to look for another way or pathway of healing. Um, and he heard about this guy that had got healed. And he told him about it was his mind. It was a change of his mind, you know, and the way he think and, and saw and perceived reality, which caused a different killing in his life. And so he sought out this healing. And so this lady, uh, the master was, you know, speaking to him about healing and about reality. And he was like, no, that's not real. That's not real. That can't be. And she like pushed him, you know, pushed the spirit out of his physical body. And he was like, whoa, it is another reality, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that exists. You know, so, you know, this is what's occurring for us, you know, in this uh, 12th hour. So I'm excited about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think we ought to come back to this next week because we have no way near exhausted this issue of life and immortality. There are several other <laughs> scriptures. Uh, I'm finding more scriptures all the time uh, about uh, about life and immortality. But but and and plus we want to talk a little more about uh, uh, Mary and and this scenario. Uh, but but you know here's the thing. Uh, we we need to realize that we live by one reality most of our lives, and there is more than one. That would be that would be like coming into. Uh, I, I remember in some of the old time uh, gospel arenas where uh, our way is the only way, and there is no other way. Um, <laughs> what, what, what was being said was, "There's mm -hmm. only one reality, and there are no other realities." Right. And the truth is, uh, you know, when I was a young uh, Pentecostal boy, I was told by my peers, don't venture out of your denomination, stay within your group. And I yep, wanted to yep. get out and, and see some other things that were going on so bad, but I was obedient and big, big mistake. I, I felt like, uh, you know, but here's the thing. There is more than one reality. Uh, yeah. the, the, just like there's more than one revelation. It, it, you know, this is an ever expanding concept. Yeah. And so, uh, let's come back to this next week because I'll tell you what, the Apostle Paul preached this stuff and he died at age 63 or so. Uh, that's not a, a, a reality. Y you can say that Paul had the full revelation or he didn't. That's debatable. Uh, I, I would just say this. He didn't have the end of all revel revelation uh, because uh, even, even if our generation does not survive, gentlemen, the fact is there will be other revel other generations who will have greater awarenesses and greater revelations and, and greater realities than we ever thought. Because there is more than one reality. And the reality is that you don't have to die. You can live and, and continue yes. to, to yes. see this human body revitalized, uh, <laughs> as you said, Jermaine, <laughs> another part of the Amen. Amen. Um, uh, one to another that you can just change your awareness, change the way you think. And that's really been what all this is about. So um, we just appreciate all of you being on uh, that here in the chat room, all of our friends of the ministry, people who are new friends and, and, and becoming uh, good friends of the ministry. We appreciate you so much. And uh, what a wonderful panel. Uh, guys, I'll tell you what, uh, this is such an important subject because when you talk about the fullness of God uh, and then you bring it to the within factor, the fullness of God in me, uh, mm -hmm. What does that look yes. like? What does that feel like? Uh, the truth is, Amen. everything that God has, Jesus said, or, or uh, Philip said this about Jesus, said, I think it was Philip, he said that in him uh, the, is the fullness of the Godhead bodily yeah. or yeah. literally. Yeah. And he said, and you are complete in him. So yeah. without Amen. him, there is no completion. But thank God we were created complete and we were created Amen. to experience completeness. Yes. So, uh, anybody else have anything they need to say before we jump off of here? No, man.
is. This, hey, one uh, quick, one quick thing, Doctor yeah. Bill. I tell you what, <laughs> transform this, this right here, transform my thinking, and it's one sentence. The the moment I begin to realize that my death does not bring me to resurrection and eternal life, his death brought me to resurrection and eternal life, which That's has it. already occurred. So then I began to look at, I was always brought up in my circles that you had to die to get it. And so that's what I believe. And we, we made this a mystical and we just glorified death almost, but it, it's not yeah. my death that brings me there. It's his death that brings me there. And that just that fact right there changed my life. Man. Yeah. I'm hearing just one thing. Yeah. There's someone that's listening and the Lord says, your hope is being restored. There's somebody that feels like they've lost hope. Yeah. But the Lord says, your hope is being restored even right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome. Amen. And, and you know something we haven't even, uh, and, and that's good because that's what we're really trying to do is just let people know there is hope. You know, the definition, the Bible, the Bible definition of hope is confident expectation of good. <laughs> and, and that's yeah. the realm of, of awareness you've got to live in. Come on. Uh, come on. And, and we haven't even got into things like people are wondering, when did all this start? When did, was it really at the cross? Well, how about this? Revelation 13, eight says that uh, he was the <laughs> lamb slain from the foundation. foundation of the world. And I know there's other religions <clears throat> before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that happened. We're still learning, but thank <laughs> God that it did. And so uh, what did Jesus do? It was almost like the reenactment of a play. Uh, he came to show us Ooh. the reality of who we are. Yes, sir. And yes, uh, sir. Of what this is all about. So, Thank God our minds, our memories are being uh, are being jump started again, and we are remembering. Uh, uh, Apostle Jermaine, now is that grin like I got to say something? To <laughs> no, I'm, you know. hey, I'm just soaking it all in, man. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, brother. Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we'll come back to this next week and uh, see where this is going to go for part three and. Um, uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for so much for being on with me. And uh, again, uh, hey, if anybody out there would like to help us, uh, we don't have television ratings, although this is TV of the future. Uh, uh, not just World Bible School, but Internet television. <laughs> yes, World Bible School is the TV of the future. Uh, uh, what you can do to help us is if you'll just click like and then click share and let people know that... Um, uh, yeah, Lisa's uh, uh, love drunk uh, on everything that's being said. Um, let people know that there's something good going on out there on Facebook. And thank God for Facebook. I appreciate uh, yes. all those on Facebook for helping to make this possible. And for BeLive.TV, uh, it's a great venue for putting these shows together in a professional way. And we're going to come back next week. And we are going to share. Yeah, you guys are all, you guys are all just out of it. You know, I'm hanging out with a bunch of drunks. I mean, it's unbelievable. I'm going to have to start a skid row ministry or something. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that, that's what happens when you talk about life in his life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody have a great evening and we'll see you next week. There'll be no uh, take another look in the morning, uh, but I'll be back Thursday night with Dr. K. Fairchild next Friday morning with uh, Dr. K, uh, Dr. Uh, Catherine uh, soon. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit out. out now, but uh, we'll see everybody then. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye -bye. Wow.